All right, so now I'm ready to begin the two uh, trees with texture, two tree trunks with texture. Um, this first one's gonna be a birch tree. Um, it's a uh, birch tree is known for the white peeling bark that they have. Here's an example of the birch tree. Um, you can see it's got kind of dots that create texture and lines, uh, horizontal lines. There's also some vertical lines that are a little more subtle, but you'll also notice there's a shadow tone on the sides of the, of the trunk and limb so that you can see that. The second tree is a hardwood tree, and this texture is made with the fist of your hand being pushed down into the surface. Um, it's important that when you press down that you're trying to stay within the space that you don't end up with bleed out into the open area. So we're gonna try to make that happen today as well. So when you're drawing your trunk, try to make sure that you're thinking about the width of your palm so that you can get enough of a pad. It's not a smash, but like a touch and a lift so try not to smash too hard or it'll go outside of that shape. It also is handy to have a paper towel for that one because you'll need it to wipe your hand off. So we're gonna start with the birch tree and I'm just gonna get that surface wet. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is on this first tree, we do wet the surface. On the dark tree that we're using our hand with, we do not. So I'm just gonna get this wet first on my palette, I've already prepared some colors. Um, I have a yellow ochre that I've added a little bit of violet to. Remember, violet and yellow are complements, so the violet has grayed down the, um, the yellow ochre considerably, so it made it like a very dirty yellow. And so that's the color I'm putting on there first. You can see it's barely a color. It's very, very light, almost like a cream tan color. And I'm gonna put that on the paper first. And I'm using this brush size number eight. Um, it's a, my bigger, rounder brush. You have a 10 in your set, depending on the size of your tree, your eight or 10 could work. If you have a smaller tree, I would use the eight. Uh, so there's that color that's in place. And now I'm going to be working with a much smaller brush because I want to create a dotted pattern. This is the number two brush. And I'm going to work with uh, some paint gray. Fairly strong in color. And I'm going to create um, a shadow edge, and I'm going to be creating a small line of dots along the edge, the shadow side of the tree. So for me, the shadow, the light is coming from the right side, so I'm putting shadow down the left side. So all along this edge. And I like to use a dotted pattern rather than a brush stroke because the brush stroke deposits the depth of the color on the end of the brush stroke, not in the middle part. So you can play around with that and see what I mean. Um, but if you create a stroke, usually you get a pocket of the dark on the end, but you don't get as much in the middle. So um, anytime I'm making a longer stroke that goes along an edge, I usually create smaller strokes to, to make that happen. And then just going over the very edge to smooth it out so you don't end up with a jaggedness to it. All right, so there's my shadow sides of both the limb and the trunk, but now I need to create some of those rounded uh, dotted lines to create the cross, uh, the cross lines that create the look of a um, birch tree. Now, my color's gonna get lighter as I work through this um, trunk area, and that's okay. And it may not look that exciting right now, but I've, trust me that that will look more realistic. It's nice if you can give these lines a little bit of curve. I wish mine were a little bit more curvy. And you can let some come from the edge on both directions. You could have some that are only in the middle that don't go to any edge. Um, on the limb part, it's probably not gonna be as evident that there's those, but you could put a little bit of color on there. Um, I do want to um, also create just a little bit of vertical lines, make sure it's wet enough to do that. Um, create just a little bit of vertical lines in there just to give a little bit of texture. And that's probably enough of that texture. And before this gets too much drier, I am gonna take um, a clean brush and I'm grabbing a little bit of a gray blue hue and I'm gonna run it down the shadow edge of the limb here because it's starting to dry. I don't mind that edge too much. And then I'm gonna take some down this side of the tree as well. create some shadow. I'll put a 
little in here too because that would probably be an indent on the tree trunk. So that's my first layer for that one. So we'll let that one dry. And now we'll go on to our second tree. Now in this case, I want this to be a very, very, very dark color because it's gonna lighten up considerably when I press my hand into it. I'm not gonna wet the trunk first though. I wanna keep it dry. And for the color on this one, I'm gonna be working with uh, the Payne's Gray um, and some burnt umber mixed into it. So and to, this is a really nice, strong, deep color. And I gotta cover this quickly because if I let it dry, it's not going to allow me to get any texture in it with my hand. So be ready with a lot of paint and move quickly to get this covered. And I can always work on my edges a little bit after I've got the texture in there, but texture is really important right now. So I wanna to try to get this in place. And while it's wet, I'm going to make a fist, touch that down, and again, don't smash, I'm just placing, and I'm going to use a finger on here, get that skinnier, try to use my fingertips. You can see I've got some paint on my hand and on the side of my finger, but it's worth it. So there, I'm going to... Give that texture some time to rest. You can see I got some nice pooling of color, um, some nice choppy texture from the, from the hand. But again, it's just pressing that hand into it lightly. Don't smash or you'll end up with some bleed out on the edges of your tree limbs. So that's layer one. We'll let that dry and we'll come back to our layer two. So I'm ready to do the second layer of color on, or a second treatment on my um, trees. And the one thing I am noticing on this tree over here is, I, you know, I did a little bit of shadow line on this one, on the shadow side, but I didn't on this one, and I really wish I had. So I'm gonna try to make up for that today. I'm just working with the, the number four round brush, and I'm getting a little bit of a, um, uh, a little bit of Payne's Gray, and I'm gonna just get a dark edge down one side of the tree where the shadow would be. And I'm gonna do this one edge at a time. Now I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm gonna take it down the edge of that just to kind of soften that out. Just want a little bit of shadow there. I just feel like it was awfully flat. Um, so I'm just gonna pull that color over just a bit. I don't wanna hide my texture, but I don't wanna have, I don't wanna have that without any shadowing on it. I think that's a little better. So I'm gonna put a little bit more shadow um, along in here. Again, just using a wet brush then, I'm gonna go in and soften the edge of that. That's better. And then I'm gonna do just a little bit on that limb here, kind of coming down into there, taking that up along the edge. Again, just going to hit the edge with a little bit of water. And I don't want to hit it so hard with the water that it blends out and covers over my texture that I made with my hand last time. I want that texture to stay there. Um, but that gives at least a little bit of uh, surface there that I feel like it's a little bit more rounded looking. I don't want it to be such a flat shape. So I'm gonna go, while that was drying a little bit, I'm gonna go over to this one and add some of the finishing touches. So I've got my bark on the tree and I have my shadows. I'm fine with all of that. Now it's time to add some twigs um, to up here, uh, add some grasses at the base and some sponge foliage. So I've got my liner brush, which is the one with the really long hair. And I made it wet so it goes to a really nice point. And I'm gonna roll it in some really dark Payne's gray, and now I can, I'm gonna try not to get my hand in there, but I can certainly start to create some, uh, some branches coming off the side of that, and then maybe a little bit over here too. So getting a little light, so I'll add some more to that. I 
always like to try to get just a few uh, branches in there. So that's that's pretty good. I'll get one more. A little tweak off there. All right. So that's good for branches, and I'll add some foliage to that. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, grasses around the base. So again, I'm rolling my brush into some darker greens, a little bit of Payne's gray. And you can certainly add, you know, add some blades of grass around, around the sides and behind. So just to get a feeling of the grasses around it. And then I'm going to work with my sponge. Um, I had one that I got wet, but now I can't find it. So I'll use this one here. Or is that it? Okay, here it is. So I've got this sponge um, that's on my palette. I'm going to grab some, some strong color with that and add some foliage. Just want to make sure it's not too pastel. Grab some yellow. So I want to get a little more water on that. Add a little bit of some yellow foliage in there too. All right, so that's that's pretty good. That one's done. So now I'm going to go to my other one that's um, probably still a little damp, but not so bad that I'm I'm worried. So I'm going to add some twigs and branches to that one too. I'm going to get just a little bit of water on my green, soften that up. All right, so going back to my liner brush, rolling it in the very dark Payne's Gray. And I can try some, some twigs coming off of this one. some grasses around the base. And then I'm going to work with my sponge again. water. Oh, it's too watery for my taste. That's better. All right. That one's done.